welcome to Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger. Coming up, why are bacteria becoming resistant to antibiotics and how can technology help? In this edition, we tell you more about what the WHO calls the post-antibiotic era, a world in which people die from simple infections that have been treatable for decades. And we'll pump up the 3D volume in Test24 with the 3D Sound1 module. It fits on all headsets and brings you an incredible level of immersion in sound. But first, the 17th edition of the Mathematics Fair is underway here in the French capital. And this year, organizers want to remind everyone that math is still the one discipline at the heart of innovation and technology. It's the base, if you will, of countless new products and services across the globe. Our reporters went to the fair to see what the fuss is all about. <laughs> Bringing mathematics to life, a cartoon created by hours of calculation. Behind the scenes, it's not just artists working in the world of animation, but mathematicians too. And now this startup is offering to do the hard work for them. They've created a tool capable of mimicking the work of the greatest animators. In fact, maths is at the heart of almost every aspect of our lives. Train times and up-to-date traffic information are all computed by mathematical models. We even analyse breakdowns. We have a model for scrutinising failures in the railway system to see if something needs to be replaced and how much it would be worth before and after. Maths plays an essential role in shaping innovation and technology, which power our everyday lives, like mobile phones, used by 4.6 billion people across the globe today. According to France's superstar mathematician, not only do we use our devices for mathematical and scientific apps, but also their very existence relies on numbers. Evidently, this is a mix of everything. Also, there's not one person that fully understands what happens inside a mobile phone. That requires diverse knowledge. But obviously, it embodies algorithms, mathematics, physics, integrated science and other things. The socio-economic impact of maths means there's now a growing need for mathematicians in France, where the field already holds a world-leading position. And now to our top story. If you weren't taking antibiotic resistance seriously before, now would be a good time to start. Scientists believe that in the near future, antibiotic resistance will claim the lives of up to 10 million people worldwide every year. That's more than cancer, and it represents at least $100 trillion in sacrificed gross national product. The phenomenon occurs when an antibiotic has lost its ability to effectively control or kill bacterial growth. In other words, the bacteria are resistant and continue to multiply despite the drug. For more on this, let's cross over to Dr. Prashant Nagpal from the University of Colorado Boulder. Thanks for joining us, sir. Can you first tell us why resistance to antibiotics is such an important issue? So the resistance to antibiotic is a is a is an important issue because we've kind of taken antibiotics to be to be always available. It's sort of the the basis or our foundation for modern medicine. We always assume that whenever we're going to go into a surgery or we have a mild infection, that there will always be antibiotics that will help us uh, not only as primary source of uh, treatment, but also support us. Uh, in need when 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 other therapies are given to us, like in immune compromised patients for cancer or HIV or or in surgery and stuff. But if suddenly the bugs were to get resistant to all the antibiotics that we have, we will be in a pre-antibiotic uh, era. Now this will be a post-antibiotic era, where millions of people can die simply by by catching an infection because the bugs are all around us. And why are bugs becoming resistant to antibiotics? So it's the bugs that are all around us that are becoming resistant to antibiotics uh, because we have uh, increasingly less and less number of antibiotics that are available to us because there's no new research that is being done in making new antibiotics. At the same time, we have been indiscriminately using antibiotics in almost everything from hand care products to soaps to agriculture in, in plants. So bacteria all around us are increasingly by simple natural evolution becoming resistant to this very limited supply of antibiotics that we have. Since we are exposed to uh, bugs from all around in our food, water, ecosystem, and also um, around us, 
um, we get exposed to all of these strains of increasing number of antibiotic resistance, which are now resistant to almost all known clinical antibiotics. And that's at the heart of this uh, big problem of antibiotic drug resistance. And it looks like you might have found the solution to this problem. Tell us more about this new treatment you developed. So this is our step towards uh, developing a novel antibiotic, which is not a small molecule base, but essentially a nanoparticle, which can be customized very quickly to try and target antibiotic drug resistance. So here we've used redox species or reduction oxidative species, which are naturally used by all cells in communication and maintaining a balance and supporting their life cycle. Once we identify some redox species that were critical for these antibiotic uh, or antibiotic resistance, resistant bacteria, we were able to successfully create nanoparticles um, that would go in and produce these species to sort of imbalance this uh, redox within these uh, antibiotic drug resistant bacteria and kill them. Now, these bacteria are nominally surrounded by human tissue, and these human tissues were more or more stable. They could, they could sustain the small uh, level of uh, increase in these uh, redox species that we produce with nanoparticles. So these nanoparticles that we've developed are completely benign in dark, and they can be uh, uh, there can be drug resistant bacteria around it and human tissue, and nothing would happen to them. But the moment we activate them with light, they start producing almost on a cue these redox species that selectively kill the nanoparticles which is very different from other nanotherapies that people have developed over the years. So we believe this could be the selectivity and this huge advantage of adaptability uh, of redox species using these nanoparticles is a key in this fight, could be a key in this fight to, to tackle antibiotic drug resistance. Thank you so much, sir. That was Dr. Prashant Nagpal there, assistant professor at the University of Colorado Boulder. Well, it's time to welcome on set Dan and Jay Cattlecar. He's going to help us dig a little bit deeper into this topic. Dan, welcome. Thank you. How can technology um, help fight this worldwide public health problem? Well, one of the key areas is quicker diagnosis for effective treatment. Now, it's not uncommon to see people getting prescribed preemptive medications while the diagnosis results are awaited. Now, using the traditional methods of petridation agar solution, it can take up to 48 hours or two days. So it's during this time that the preemptive -pre medications are subscribed. Now, while that may help uh, in some regards, but it also results in the strains of bacteria getting emboldened, which results in them becoming more resistant to drugs. Now, uh, an American company, uh, Ohio-based company, has uh, developed or has been at the forefront of developing techniques uh, to speed up this diagnosis process. Uh, it's, uh, the company is called Nanologix, and they have developed a technique uh, using a kit called Bio Nanopore, which consists of a highly specialized nanomembrane. Now, this nanomembrane is put on top of the agar solution, uh, which enables the cells and nutrients to come or to move through the pores where the bacteria, the bacterial pathogens, uh, they can grow. And this membrane can be plucked off, put on a staining plate, and you can, you know, the researchers can find whether the pathogens are present or not. It's a very effective way because, according to the company, it speeds up the diagnosis process by up to 12 times. So imagine uh, if a process takes 48 hours and you can get the results in four hours, that will result in quick diagnosis and quick treatment, which could result in, ultimately result in the uh, slowdown of uh, the uh, progression of... Uh, Superbugs. Exactly. And now, what are the means available to people to help them take their medication? Well, Julia, doctors always insist to finish your prescription. Now, I have been one of the many, I guess, who haven't finished prescription on more than one time. Now, for example, if you're given a prescription of one week and you finish it in four days, of course, uh, you won't have the sy symptoms, but that doesn't mean that the bacterial pathogens have been killed. There still exist some bacterial pathogens, which, because they are unattended, because you finish uh, your treat or you stop the treatment, they reproduce to, to create strains which are more drug resistant and which are stronger. So finishing prescription is the key and for that, a New York based company called AI Cure has launched an app which essentially films you, it identifies you using facial recognition, it, it also films the medication you are taking and using this data which is uh, stored on a server, it shares it with your doctor so that the doctor can monitor whether you're And you make are sure that it. you're actually taking the medication exactly. till the end of the prescription. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dan. Moving on now to Test24.
And this gadget we have here on Tech24 will perhaps change the way you listen to your content forever. It gives you a sound that's not stuck to your ears anymore. Instead, it's facing you just like real speakers would in real life. Is that right, Dan? That's right. This little device, uh, which is made by the French company 3D Sound Labs, it enhances the, the immersion, the immersive sound experience, even using your ordinary headset. You, know, you don't need high-end headsets to enjoy immersive sound experience. Now, how does it do it? So it basically has uh, nine axis motion, sen motion sensors. You uh, connect this device to your phone through the company app. Uh, it's currently available on iOS. Now, once it's connected, you play all your media through the app, not directly on the phone. And I have personally, I have tested this app and I think there's quite a significant difference in when you listen to the music without this uh, device and after you listen to it, I mean, with the device. Uh, it's telling because you can hear sounds at different locations and that's the, that's the idea. Because of this technique, they are able to uh, direct multi-sound or multi-point sounds, which makes it more immersive. And it's great, not only for music on the phone, but it's also good for when you're playing video games on your PC. I mean, you can also use it on PC through, uh, if you have Windows PC through a driver, uh, you can enjoy video games, you can enjoy cinema and have a great experience as if you are visiting a, a theater or you are having a high-end uh, uh, surround sound system. Very well. And uh, if you actually want to give it a try, you can go on their website where they have um, uh, demos of this 3D experience. Well, that's all we have time for, but please stay tuned. More editions coming up.